I've been watching the last several days, if not the last few weeks, as I'm sure many of you have, uh, the President, Donald Trump, who campaigned vigorously and unequivocally on moving the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He did it repeatedly. And, uh, but I've been watching with great frustration and concern how he appears to be in the midst of betraying that promise. And I hope this isn't becoming a habit or a pattern. We will play the Secretary of State soon on his interview Sunday, which was an abomination. I told you about McMaster, who's really awful. He is the assistant to the President for National Security. He's wiping out one conservative after another over there and trying to wipe out others. He is a what we would call a military bureaucrat at this point. Uh, how he was using uh, the language of the PLO and Hamas, calling Judea and Samaria. These are ancient Jewish lands, ancient Jewish lands, Judea and Samaria. It's not a West Bank, the West Bank of Jordan. Jordan gives it the name West Bank, and now we're all supposed to say West Bank. Might as well call it Israel's East Bank. But it's not Israeli-occupied territory. It's Palestinian-occupied territory to be historically accurate. And yet so quickly and easily has the President of the United States fallen into the lap of the of the leftists, of the bureaucrats, of the State Department, of the swamp, when he unequivocally stated that we're going to move the embassy. So why doesn't he move it? What's stopping him? Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is hugely important from a symbolic point of view, and it has, it, it, it has real-world effect too, but now they're linking it to a peace negotiation. What is the president's obsession now with a peace negotiation? Where did this come from? In many respects, a two-state solution for Israel is a final solution for Israel. That country, they can't make a mistake, you know. One part of the country is seven, eight, nine miles wide. One of these Russian MiGs, I mean, before you blink, it's covered the entire width of that particular area of Israel. When you look at the Golan Heights, the enemy's all around. Now, as I told you, I'm going over there next week for the 50th anniversary of the reunification with Jerusalem. Do you know the Palestinians claim the entirety of Jerusalem? Including Jewish sites that are <laughs> over 5,000 years old? So why is the President of the United States playing footsie with Abbas, who is a known terrorist? Let me repeat that. Abbas dresses nicely, he comes to the United States, he makes what what people consider reasonable demands. And then when he goes back, they continue to fund terrorism. They continue to encourage their children in, in elementary school and even preschool to become suicide bombers. I'm not even talking about Hamas. I'm talking about Fatah. Oh, the moderates. Well, is that moderate in your neighborhood? Ain't it a moderate in my neighborhood? I don't know what the president's doing. There's mixed reports today. He's going to go to the Wailing Wall, which is arguably the most important Jewish site. There's a report in Israel, two reports really, one in the Jerusalem Post and one by their local TV uh, station, that one of the president's senior people over there, when asked if the prime minister of Israel can accompany our president, because our president now reportedly is going to go to the wall, um, he raised his voice and he said, this is not in Israeli territory. Excuse me. The West wa- Western Wall is not in Israeli territory? Well, where is it? Where is it? This is amazing. Now, Abbas, just so you know, got his doctorate in Holocaust denial. PhD dissertation was in denying the Holocaust. This is a gruesome, loathsome, genocidal maniac who is treated as if he's some kind of a statesman. But McMaster, the assistant to the president for national security, was using the language of this man. So he's calling Judea and Samaria the West Bank. Excuse me, not even doing that. He's calling it Palestine. Palestine. The Palestinians call it Palestine. It's like climate change. We've gone from global cooling to global warming to climate change. Well, now we've gone from 
what is correct, Judea and Samaria, to the West Bank, and now to Palestine. When did that happen? We had an armistice agreement. That's the only reason those boundaries exist. They were never intended to be permanent. Now we treat it as if they're permanent. Now, I don't know what the president's thinking. Maybe it's because he's not informed about this. He's not knowledgeable about it. So he's susceptible to being pressured or influenced or whatever. Because he's surrounded by guys like Tillerson and McMaster and the usual and the usual types who are pushing this agenda. Why did the president say that he would move our embassy to Jerusalem when he didn't mean it? Why would he do that? Why is it so difficult? Why is it so complicated? And why now? Well, I want you to listen to this. Actually, i got to take a break. Stay where you are, bated breath and all. And by the way, we're going to cover many, many things, but I want you to listen to this. because You're not going to hear this anywhere else. And there's a lot of reasons for that. People don't want to be viewed as critical of the president. I'm not critical of the president all the time. I want him to succeed. But I'll be critical of him when I think I need to be critical of him. I was that way with Ronald Reagan, and I worked for Ronald Reagan, although I didn't have to be that critical, quite frankly. But this is a big deal, isn't it? It's a big deal. Why is he treating the president of China, Xi, one way, and Netanyahu another, in my humble opinion? I want you to listen to this Secretary Tillerson uh, on Sunday on the Meet the Depressed. Which cut is it? A cut 10. Go. The issue of moving uh, the embassy, the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, um, it, it has been reported that it is not going to happen, and then that's been retracted. Let me ask you this. When is the final decision, or is this going to be one of those things that we're always going to contemplate moving it, but it's a moving target for a while? Well, the president, I think rightly, has taken a very deliberative approach to understanding the, the issue itself, uh, listening to input from all interested parties in the region and understanding. All right, so, 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 so. see how it's changed? We're going to move it. Now we want to listen to all interested parties in the region. Well, let's see. You got the Israelis and then you have the Arabs. The Israelis, that's one party, and then you got 25 Arab states. What the hell is this? Is this a joke? What is this? Go ahead. Move in the context of a peace initiative. Uh, what impact would such a move have? As you All right, stop right there. So now the move has to be examined in the context of a peace initiative. A peace initiative? Does anybody remember that during the campaign? So now the move, if you listen to the Secretary of State, is connected to a peace initiative. As my buddy Ben Shapiro put it at the Daily Wire, oh, so now it's blackmail. Either the Israelis participate in a peace initiative, the art of the deal, and it comes up with a peace initiative, or it's not on the table any longer. Isn't that what Mr. Tillerson is insinuating here? So now all of a sudden, the, Mr. Netanyahu has his back against the wall. Now they're on the defensive again. No rest for the weary, as they say. This is turning into Obama 2.0. I'm just telling you right now. Propaganda aside during the campaign, this is turning into a mess. All right, so so far you have Tillerson in his own obnoxious way saying this is being studied. We're listening to the interested parties in the region. What, like the Saudis? And uh, what's the impact on a peace initiative? Go ahead. Has recently expressed uh, his view that he wants to put a lot of effort into seeing if we cannot advance a peace initiative between Israel and Palestine. Mm -hmm. And so I think in large... Stop! Between Israel and Palestine. Mr. Tillerson, like Mr. McMaster, has just given the Palestinians effectively a country. Judea and Samaria. You heard that, Mr. Producer? Between the Israelis and Palestine. I am stunned. I am shocked. 
at how quickly the President of the United States reversed course and appears to have sold out. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Nothing effectively has been done yet, but this is really quite shocking to me. 